Well, here's a clue. She was from Barry. And the very girl next door. It was, of course, Helen Morgan who'd beaten off catwalk competition from around the globe to be crowned Miss World. But her tenure would be the shortest in the history of the competition. She was, horror of horrors, an unmarried mum and was hounded by the press, who'd also discovered she'd been cited in a divorce case. Brian Hoey talked to her. So when was it that you decided to go in for the, for the beauty business? I'd never thought of um, going in for competitions. And then one day, um, the agency, the woman who runs the agency that I worked for, she phoned up and said, well, um, this Miss Wales coming up in a week or so's time. Would you like to enter? And Miss Wales, 1974, is number 19, <laughs> Helen Morgan. The build-up and the ballyhoo for the Miss World contest in London hides the work that goes on behind the scenes. Yes, here she comes, a girl from Wales, the meteoric rise to fame in the beauty pageants. Helen Morgan, the 22-year-old freelance model. Will she make it tonight? I read the other day in the paper that it's one of the top programmes of the year. And Miss World 1974 is Miss United Kingdom. She's done it. She's done it. Helen Morgan, my goodness, what a career. You don't regard it as a cattle market at all? I don't think so, no. I think it's all just a competition. It's fun. Julia Morley now crowns Helen Morgan as Miss World. Put it straight. She's now got it all with the scepter as well. There's a guaranteed contract of £10,000. Well, for you, of course, the whole thing crumbled into dust um, very soon because you actually held the title for, I think, four or five days, four days. When did you actually decide to uh, resign? I decided as soon as I heard these allegations um, about being cited in a divorce case. I just decided then, you know, I would resign and that would be it. The title passed to Annaline Creel of South Africa, but here's someone who's stayed at the top of their profession ever since. In 1974, Tom Jones was the highest paid entertainer in the world, accustomed to the biggest, glitziest venues. So it was the scoop of the year when an Usk nightclub managed to book him, albeit for the princely sum of £25,000, for a cabaret. <laughs> Tom Jones back from wowing audiences at the London Palladium and the biggest venues in Las Vegas, the world's number one entertainer. Happy, it seems, with rather humbler surroundings. As I step down from the train and better meet me. Not exactly up in lights then, but with such a hectic schedule, just how did Tom keep that famous voice in shape? Well, I think the most important thing is uh, rest, you know, voice rest. You know, the longer I sleep, the more I rest it. And uh, steam is very good, I found. I go in steam rooms, you know, whenever I can. Moisture, I think, is the, is the best thing for me. Needless to say, it was a sellout. For a performer used to the biggest stages in the world, why a cabaret in Usk? Because everybody's enjoying themselves, you know, they're sitting down, they're having a drink, they've had a meal, you know. And, uh, it's good. I think it's the best place to be for people to see a performance in a club. But from North America to North Gwent, the song remained the same, and Tom, as ever, keen to oblige the ladies. Coming up, back to basics for many who spurn the industrial world for